I had to take turn off comments because weird people were commenting on my math videos that I didn't know. It wasn't people I knew, but I was like, okay, I don't want comments from some weird person. Like, like about you know, I get like private, so like only yeah. like, people you share the link to. I figured I could do that, but yeah, I, don't know. I didn't want. I was nervous that something would happen, some permission wouldn't work, and then it wouldn't be the way I wanted it. So. Um, yeah, so everything will be in here. Our worksheet, we're getting worksheets, those will be uploaded. So if you ever forget your worksheet here at school, you can always like bring it up and you can always do it on pencil paper. Don't feel like you um, can't do your homework because you're home. So it, I'll upload it, I'll scan it in there. Um, so hopefully everything is very user friendly. All right, so we're try talking, starting pretty basic, right triangle trigonometry. So you might have seen this in either algebra, geometry, algebra two, maybe uh, pre-calc again, so you've probably seen this plenty of times. Um, we're starting off by just finding the x value in this case. So for our warm-up, if you guys want to work through that. And again, you probably want your calculator. This is probably not an easy one to do. Um, it's mental math. Now you actually don't need string for this, you should just be using Pythagorean theorem if you forgot. So Pythagorean theorem is what you want to use for the warm-up.
So again, that would have been really tough to do without a calculator. If you can take the square root of 2,196 in your head, like you're probably in the wrong math class. Um, but <laughs> or you're some sort of like weird, like like genius. So um, yeah, want a calculator for that. Now being able to use um, Pythagorean theorem again, again and again, we'll use that over and over. All right, questions. So moving into our trig, and again, this is pretty basic, but again, like I, I mean, I, this is the first year I've taught trig here at Random Lake. I've taught it at other schools, um, and Mr. Hatfield warned me. He's like, you'll have students that are super comfortable with everything, and then ones that aren't. And so it's just a matter of understanding. There's gonna be times it feels like I'm going really slow, um, and just know that that's because maybe not everyone's in the same spot, and we can always kind of determine that as we work through this. So. When you think of trig, what do you think? Like, there's an acronym that you should think of. Sokatoa. Oh. <laughs> you said it so confidently, though. Like, like <laughs> well, you said trig, so I thought you were referring to that. The long, yeah. Acronym is like the little. <laughs> oh, cat. Yeah. Um, so, we were Sokatoa. That's a way to remember these different. Um, trig ratios without having to just like they're not just obscure no letters and numbers that go together so sine cosine and tangents should be on all the calculators you guys have in front of you it looks like everyone's got some sort of scientific or graphing calculator um, so that's sin cos and tan in your calculator and that that ratio or that acronym helps us remember what goes with each of these so SOH stands for the sides that it goes with and when we're talking about angle A here, because that's what they mentioned, so the sine or cosine or tangent of an angle, we're going to label everything based off of angle A. So um, I think it's easiest to label the hypotenuse first. That's always across from the right angle. Um, the opposite is probably the next one I usually label, and that's across from the angle we're talking about. And then the little a is the adjacent which is the side that's next to the angle, but not the hypotenuse, so it's kind of like the leftover. So why this is helpful is it's telling us what ratio we need to do. So so is the sign would be opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine it's A over H. And then tangent X. Move down, please. So hopefully this isn't brand new to you. I think all of you guys have seen it in some capacity. Like I said, I've taught most of you guys and probably taught you at some point with um, this um, acronym and knowing this, and I mean, even if you didn't take trade with me, then you took it someplace else. Um, but geometry, we talked about this. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna basically um, write these ratios, um, again, in simplest form, based off the angle they're talking about. So they give us a triangle here. This happens to be um, one of our um, Pythagorean triples, it's a three, four, five triangle, if that sounds familiar. These um, are all nice whole numbers as our side lengths rather than having crazy decimals like the warm up question had. Because a lot of times, um, if it's not a Pythagorean triple, it's going to be a decimal as part one of my side lengths. This one works out very nicely. So we want to set up the ratio. This one's all talking about angle N, whereas this one switches over to angle L. Now, notice we didn't use M intentionally because M is our right angle. So we have to label things based off of whatever angle they're asking for. So in this case, um, sine of N, I'm going to label everything based off of N, and then I'll flip it to do angle L. All so all they're looking for right now, we don't really want to solve anything like this. We just want to set up the ratio so you understand what the ratio of those two sides would be. So sine of n, again, it's opposite over hypotenuse, so 9 over 15. I'm sorry, how do you determine which one's adjacent and which one's the opposite? So it, like, 
the word opposite is supposed to be helpful. That's completely across, like opposite okay. the triangle from that um, from that angle. As a decimal, it's like 0.6. And once I have it set up for that angle, these are kind of hopefully easy ratios to kind of figure out. So noticing this isn't a coincidence that these two like flipped because the adjacent and opposite sides flipped. And so the same thing's going to happen in the tangent. That's just going to flip over. Adjacent and opposite flipped. So this just flips over. So this is just 4 over 3. So I didn't even really need to look at my triangle if I knew those were the opposite and adjacent in that same shape. So we'll get into actually solving some triangles now, finding missing sides and missing angles using these. So you definitely will want your calculator here in a second. Um, be able to find the value of x here in these first couple of examples. Um, and we're going to go through uh, basically all the different trig of right triangles in kind of one day, whereas maybe in geometry, or maybe even pre-calc, I think we did it in one day as well. But um, just that we're kind of throwing a lot into one day. Actually, pre-calc, I think we did a non-right right away. So we're probably going a little more slowly than that. All right, so in example two here, they ask us to find the value of x. They're not asking us to find everything, just x. So we're going to label everything based off of what we know. So they give me a 25 degree angle. So that's the angle that I would choose to use because I know something about that triangle there. So angle 25, I'm going to use that. So I'm going to label what I know about x here. So what would that make x in this case? It's my opposite. It's across from my angle I know. And what is 10 in this problem? Hypotenuse. It's always across from the right angle. It's always our longest side. So this is the hypotenuse. Now the adjacent isn't labeled, nor do they ask me anything about it. So I don't really care about the adjacent. So I'm not even going to label it. If you wanted to, that's fine. But since I'm looking for the opposite, I know the hypotenuse, I know the angle, this is telling me which trig ratio to use. So I have to look at my trig ratios and determine which one I should use. And there's one that's the best answer in this case that will give me what I'm looking for. So what do we want to use? Sine. Because sine has opposite and hypotenuse, and that's the two we're like, working with here. So that would be the, like, the right fit, kind of the right tool for the job in this case. So when we do this, if you, again, if you're a little rusty on your trig, we do sine of an angle. So the angle we know is 25 degrees. Now when you write sine of 25, 
that's a number itself. So like sine of 25 are now connected. You can't like separate them. So like that's like writing like 520. Like it's the same, you know, it's one thing. You can't break that up. Sine of 25 is going to equal our opposite over our hypotenuse, which is going to be 10 over x. Or sorry, x over 10. I can talk, I promise. x over 10. Now we need to solve this. And I want to get my x alone. So how do I undo what's happening to x? Yep. Multiply 10. Yeah, we're just going to multiply each side by 10. So I'm going to do times 10, times 10 over here. And again, if you're rusty on this and you haven't done this for a while in your calculator, be really careful about this. 10 times the sine of 25, you probably want to write it that way. If you write sine of 25 and then times 10, sometimes some goofy things happen. So I would write it in that particular or order. And if you need a calculator, like I said, I have some more on my desk. Um, now you should get, um, like if we round to the tenths place, you get like 4.2. Now if you don't, if, and you have a graphing calculator, it probably means you're in radian mode. So if you didn't get 4.2, you have to switch the mode over. And those of you guys who have a graphing calculator probably know what that means. If you don't, I'd be glad to show you. Because you might be in radians. So you want to double check. You okay? Matthew, are you in that situation? Did you get something? <laughs> okay, yeah, just switch back. You, if you're in radians, we want degrees, because 25 is degrees, it's not radians. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, you're probably fine. <laughs> All right, questions? I, that's kind of a good like indicator if you get some bizarre answer, you're like, I know I did my work right, it's probably that you're in the wrong mode. All right, questions here? All right, so example three is very similar. Now, this time they're telling us the 73 degree angle, sorry, the drawing's a little bit weird, that 73 is supposed to be in that bottom left corner, and then this right corner is a 90 degree angle. See if you guys can determine which trig function you should use. Label it, find it. Yep. Oh, because you switch the angle. <coughs> no. Because sometimes, no, sometimes switching the angle makes sense. Like, if the, yeah, just if it's when you notice, sometimes when the variables in the denominator, I'll flip which angle I'm looking, using. You know, so no, that's not a bad strategy. Over our hypotenuse, which is x over 6. 
Now, just so you guys realize, um, I, Eric had mentioned, like, she was able to figure out this other angle, and we'll talk about that in a second, but um, there's not one right way to do this. This one is probably one where I'd say one way is probably a little more quick than the other, but if you notice a different way and you get that way, I'm like, so just so you guys are aware that it doesn't have to be only the one way. So um, that's fine if you found a different way to get the answer. So we're multiplying each side by six. And again, we want our calculator for this because I don't know anyone that knows how to do the cosine of 73 in their head. And we get about 1.75 or 1.8 for our x. And again, taking a minute to look at our drawing and making sure it made some sort of sense is not a bad idea. Like if we got some answer like 18 for this, I hope we'd look at that and be like, what? That doesn't seem to be correct in this case. All right, questions? All right. Flip our page over here. So um, example four is where things get a little bit trickier. Let's take a minute to look at that and see if you guys can get that set up. And I'll talk to you guys about a few different strategies you can do in example of four. be up here labeling in case you're stuck. So I decided I was going to use a sign for this one because that would be opposite of a hypotenuse. But what's the issue? X is the denominator. So there's a few ways to try. Um, actually, this one, I guess there's not a better way to make it work better. So I guess we have to make, use X as the denominator. I was thinking we could change the angle perspective, but it's still the hypotenuse. There's kind of no good way to end up not having to get the X out of the denominator unless you found the other side or something like that. So let's talk about this. What happens when X is in the denominator? Any thoughts? But like, you make one of the denominator for Yeah, if I write it this way, I think it looks a lot more familiar to you guys. You've done proportions a lot, especially if you you know made it through geometry. Proportions were a huge part of geometry. If you put that over one, it looks a lot more manageable, where I can cross multiply. Now, some of you guys are like, I did the math without needing to do that. That's okay. You probably really did this without showing these steps, but just to kind of set it up here. So we do x times the sine of 15 will equal 16 times 1, or just 16. Now, remember, sine of 15, like we said on the front side, that's like one number now. So sine of 15, that all has to stay together. You can't break up sine and 15. So that moves as one thing. So x is being multiplied by the sine of 15, so what would I do next? Then we're going to divide by that. Now once you get good enough at this, or if you're that good at doing math in your head, I will tell you guys that I don't write that step down when I do these. I just do 16 divided by the sine of 15 because I've done it enough that I know that's what I need to do. And it's okay if that's the case for you, but just make sure you're, you're getting the right answer when you guys do that. So x ends up being 16. I got some crazy, if you have one of these calculators, you might have got a crazy answer. Um, you just have to hit the two little arrows to get the decimal for that. Okay, like 61.8. Seems really large, but I guess. All right, 
I have to stop my video for a bit.